My name is Pastor Esta Rosario, and on behalf of Woodmar United Methodist Church, I welcome you to our online worship service in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have good news. Our church council met on Thursday evening. And we have prayerfully, carefully decided that we will reopen for worship on Sunday, September 13th. We do ask that those of you who are most vulnerable to the coronavirus to please continue worshiping at home online until it is truly safe for you to be out and about. For those of you who are willing to come and worship in person, please know that we will require that everyone is masked and practices social distancing. There are some people in our church who are caregivers for um, those who are vulnerable to the coronavirus. And so we want to do our best to provide a safe environment for all who come through our doors. Please continue praying for our church as we come together as safely as we can and look for details to come through your snail mail email and social media platforms in the next week. Today we are celebrating Holy Communion, so I invite you to hit pause and go to your kitchen and get some bread or crackers and juice um, to use as your elements for Holy Communion. As we prepare our hearts for worship, please hear these words from the psalmist. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands.
Hello, beloved children of God. Today in worship, we're talking about living lives of praise. So I invite you to hit pause and go get some instruments in your home. And if you don't have any instruments, you could get a, a pot, pots and pans and lids because they make nice sounds. And we're going to sing a song together. Praise God, praise God, praise Him in the morning, praise Him at the noontime. Praise God, praise God, praise Him when the sun goes down. Love God, love God, love Him in the morning, love Him in the noontime. Love God, love God. Love him when the sun goes down. Serve God, serve God. Serve him in the morning, serve him in the noontime. Serve God, serve God. Serve him when the sun goes down. Thank, thank God, thank God. Thank him in the morning. Thank him at the noontime. Thank God, thank God. Thank him when the sun goes down. Praise, praise God, praise God. Praise him in the morning. Praise him at the noontime. Praise God, praise God. Praise him when the sun goes down. Let's pray. Almighty and loving God, help us to praise you with the way we live our lives by loving you and loving others, by serving you and thanking you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture reading is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Doesn't this psalm make you want to say, praise the Lord? Say it with me, praise the Lord. Better yet, let's sing praise to God. Let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here be. Praise him above, ye have. 
heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Imagine with me, if you will, David out with his sheep. He and the sheep are on a hillside. He is higher up looking down on his flock. He has his sheep in a place that is safe, plenty of food and water. The sheep are doing what they are supposed to do and don't need a lot of his attention. He's been there for a number of days. This particular day is pleasantly warm and sunny. The sky is a perfect blue. There are wispy clouds floating by, and at night it cools off some and the stars are brilliant. He has time to play his lyre and sing some songs. He has time to think, to ponder the greatness of God, what God has created, how things work together, humanity's part in God's plan. His heart is full and he begins to write. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights above, Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. David wrote these words without all of the time-saving devices we have today. He had no electricity, refrigerator, no freezer, no lights. No central heat and AC system, no car or truck or tractor, no TV, no smartphone, no computer, no email, no internet, no Facebook, FaceTime, Twitter, Instagram, no super highways, no highways of any kind for that matter. People back in David's time had to spend so much more of their days doing just things to live like fetching water building a fire, butchering an animal, tending a garden, making butter and cheese, baking bread. Even though David had to spend more hours in the days just to live, he still had time to write about praising God and the need to praise God. If you read a book on time management, it would talk about saying no to things. It would talk about having boundaries in your life. It would talk about having unscheduled time, about not scheduling every single minute of your day. We have all of these time savers in our lives, and it seems like we have less time. When we ask each other how life is, we respond, busy, but good. When our children were growing up, we limited the number of activities they could participate in. They could only play one sport at a time, and we didn't allow them to participate in traveling sports leagues. And life still felt crazy busy. I don't know what happens at your house, but in our home, we do not spend time milking cows, churning butter, lighting candles, lighting fires for heat and to cook by, we don't raise animals for food. We drive cars to wherever we need to go. That's a lot faster than walking or riding a horse. We have all of these modern conveniences, all of these time-saving inventions, yet we have little time. Little time to contemplate. Little time to ponder. Little time to think about God and the wonders he has created, his magnificence. We also need to remember that David was a shepherd when he was a boy, and he grew up to be a king. He wrote a lot during a time when writing was not easy. It seems like one of David's focuses in life was praising God. And we know that David was not a perfect man. David was a man that did seek after God's own heart. He sought God's will. He was, in a, he was a man that 
in the midst of a busy day would take time to notice God, to notice God's creation and to ponder humanity's part in that creation. The question we need answered today is, how can we live lives that say we praise God without going around verbally saying, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, but rather just speak that with the way we live? Well, I'd like to offer up at least three ways to living a life of praise. First, through prayer. Second, by noticing God's work in the world. And third, by being grateful. Okay, prayer. One day we may pray, Lord, I'm so busy. When I go to work, it seems like I run all day long. I work hard. And when I get home, I have a mental list of things to get done there. And when I get done with that, I'm so tired that I drop into my chair or into my bed and fall asleep and then it starts all over again the next day. I want to be your servant. I want to do those things you ask me to do during the day. And I often feel good about what I've accomplished in the day, but I'm not sure if I'm doing what you want me to do. Help me to understand my purpose better. Help me to understand my role in your kingdom better. Help me to see you and your work throughout the day. When we speak of praying, remember it's communication with God. It's both speaking to God, either out loud or in our minds, and listening for God. There are many ways to pray. There are many books out there on prayer, and it's good to read and learn as much as we can about the spiritual discipline of prayer. And it's even more important to put that into practice. Remember that God longs to be in relationship with us. God wants us to share our hopes and dreams, our fears and misgivings, our intercessions for others. God just wants us to spend time with him every day. It's hard to be a person after God's own heart if we don't spend time with God. Two, noticing God's work in the world. Every person is God's creation. Each person we come in contact with during the day is here because God created them. Not only did God create them, but God loves them dearly and longs for them to be a part of his family. Those people that make our days go easier, those people that we enjoy being around and working with, those people that add challenges to our day, those people that make us grit our teeth, those people that seem to go out of their, their way to make our lives more difficult. Those people that are perpetually happy, those people that always have a big smile on their face, those people who bring joy to our lives, every person that we encounter through the day, every person is one of God's creation. Think for a moment about the beauty of the world in which we live. My oldest sister lived in Colorado for several decades before moving to Tennessee. She got married when I was only five, and our annual vacations were to visit her in Colorado. The Rocky Mountains are breathtaking. Snow-capped mountains, even in the summer against a perfect blue sky. Beautiful columbine flowers along the trail chipmunks scurrying around 70 degrees. So, so beautiful. My words do not come close to describing the majesty of the Rocky Mountains. God created a beautiful world for us to enjoy that we might be reminded of the Creator as we enjoy His creation. In the words of the psalmist, praise the Lord from the earth, 
you great sea creatures in all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. God is at work all around us. We just need to notice it. Jean Webster once said, I'm going to enjoy every second, and I'm going to know I'm enjoying it while I'm enjoying it. Most people don't live. They just race. They are trying to reach some goal far away on the horizon, and in the heat of the going, they get so breathless and panting that they lose sight of the beautiful, tranquil country they are passing through. And then the first thing they know, they are old and worn out, and it doesn't make any difference whether they've reached the goal or not. Jean was born in 1876. Our lives really haven't changed since then, except to have gotten even more busy. I would change the quote a little. I'm going to enjoy every second of my life with God, and I'm going to know I'm enjoying it while I'm enjoying it. Lastly, we need to be thankful to God for what he has done, continues to do, and will do for us. How often throughout the day do we thank God for the little things or the big things in our lives? How often do we thank our coworkers for being who they are? How often do we thank members of our families for being a special part of our lives? Living a life filled with thankfulness changes our perspective and creates a space for holy living. The more we pray to God, the more we will notice God's work all around us. The more thankful we are, the more we will say, praise the Lord. I'm going to conclude with a modern day psalm that God gave to my brother Charlie a few years ago. It's titled, Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord in the morning I will praise the Lord throughout the day. I will praise the Lord in all circumstances, no matter how I feel along the way. The Lord is always with me all of the day through. He is my constant companion, no matter what others may do. He is the reason I rise in the morning and go about my work. It is his purpose that I seek, lest a duty I should shirk. I will look for ways to serve him as I meander along the way. My road may be tough and rocky, and it is because of him that I say, I will praise the Lord in the morning. I will praise the Lord throughout the day. I will praise the Lord in all circumstances, no matter how I feel along the way. Some days are so wonderful so much joy fills my heart. His love is overwhelming. I can't help but want to do my part. I see his beauty around me, including the warmth of the sun, the healing of his presence, inviting me towards him to run. Instead, I bow on my knees, and in a whispered voice, I say, I will praise the Lord in the morning. I will praise the Lord throughout the day. I will praise the Lord in all circumstances, no matter how I feel along the way. Some days are not so easy. Unexplained things come my way. I find myself feeling lost and confused. I have doubts and begin to sway. As the day continues on, unpleasant though it may be, there is something I encounter 
something that helps me to see that God does love me and as his child I chose to go I chose to walk with Jesus and understand it is so I will praise the Lord in the morning I will praise the Lord throughout the day I will praise the Lord in all circumstances no matter how I feel along the way life on this earth is not easy so many choices to make we need to focus on others and things for Jesus sake when we focus on what's important and put our selfish ways behind then we see Jesus in others faces and understand how we can be kind when Jesus is our light shining bright for all to see he gives our life a purpose that takes our focus off of me he is our rock and our fortress and guides us along the way it's because of his love for us that we are able to say we will praise the Lord in the morning we will praise the Lord throughout the day we will praise the Lord in all circumstances no matter how we feel along the way Will all of God's children please say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ you are forgiven glory to God amen when we are in worship together this is when we greet each other with uh, well since COVID we will greet each other with a wave maybe an elbow bump but probably just a wave so I invite you now to hit pause and maybe call a friend you haven't talked to for a while and share the peace of Christ with them. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, we praise you for all who labor for the common good and for those whose service is unappreciated. We thank you for children whose play is the work of learning to live in the world. We thank you for disciples who are obedient to the prompting of your Holy Spirit in their relationships. We thank you for your yearning mercy that waits for us to make all our hours and days participation in your healing and blessing of the earth and all peoples you made us in your image and set us in a lush garden as caretakers and when we chose to have it all to ourselves you turned our freedom to the toil for survival when we cried out in our misery you delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. By the prophets, you called us to return to you and delight in good food without price. 
You confronted us with the waste of laboring apart from you, and you asked us, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Anointed with your spirit, his food was to do your will and to complete it. He took the common things of daily life, blessed them, and broke and shared them so that all were satisfied. He told those who followed him, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. He confronted the powers of greed and evil at the cost of his life, but you triumphed over death and placed him at your right hand to intercede for his disciples until the feast of eternal life. By water and the Spirit, he calls us to continue his work until we and all peoples feast at his heavenly banquet. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves to live daily as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all who are watching. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Now traditionally, traditionally on Labor Day Sunday, as we come forward to receive Holy Communion, we are invited to bring with us a symbol of our life's work as a public declaration of committing the next year's work to our Lord. Obviously, we're not in the sanctuary together at this time, so I would invite you, as you receive Holy Communion in your homes, to say a prayer dedicating your life's work your call on your life to the Lord for this upcoming year. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Jesus Christ shed for you.
Thanks be to God. Amen.
us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. in the world. Yes, that is who we are. We are God's beloved children who are called and sent to make a difference in the world by living lives of praise through prayer, noticing God's good work in our world and being thankful. And may the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all today and remain with us forever. Amen. <laughs>